Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and I hope you're ready because we have got a treat for you today. We're going to be making a dry cured Calabrian pork tenderloin. And this easy to follow recipe is not only perfect for anyone who loves good charcuterie, but for anyone who's just getting started into dry curing meat. Let's make the Calabrian pork tenderloin. To get started, we need a pork tenderloin, and this is what we got from our butcher. And the very first thing you're gonna do before you get started is weigh that piece of meat and record the weight. So in the description box below, you'll find a link to the recipe. And this is what it's gonna look like when you click on that link. If you scroll down to the recipe itself, you're gonna notice a little box that says, how much do you wanna make? In that box, you're gonna type in the weight of your tenderloin. And I wanted these recipes to be as easy as possible to take all the guesswork out of it for you. So let's say your tenderloin weighs 745 grams. As soon as you type that in, the ingredients in the recipe are gonna adjust based off of the weight of your meat. And voila, no more guesswork. It's all figured up for you. So carefully weigh each one of those spices and place them in a container. The method of curing that we're gonna be using for this tenderloin is called the equilibrium cure. And what that means is that we are adding the exact amount of spices that we want our tenderloin to take in, nothing extra. So we're just gonna use 100% of the spices, make sure that we rub it onto our tenderloin. And then before we put it in our vacuum seal bag, anything that's fallen off of that tenderloin, we're gonna scoop up and we're gonna place it in the bag as well. Vacuum sealing is the best way to cure your meat, but if you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can always place it in a Ziploc bag, try to remove as much air out as possible, fold the bag over just like that, and then you're ready to place this into your refrigerator. So we're gonna place this into our kitchen refrigerator for six days. And every day, we wanna make sure that we massage the meat and we wanna flip it. And that's gonna help the seasonings penetrate the meat, allowing it to cure evenly. So after six days, this is what your cured pork tenderloin is gonna look like and now it's time to start drying. You're gonna notice that it's firmed up a little bit. It smells amazing. All of those seasonings have really penetrated and infused into the meat. So what we're gonna do now is rinse off some of these herbs that are on the outside of our tenderloin because we wanna prepare the surface for that Calabrian pepper powder. We're using cool water to rinse off our tenderloin and once it's mostly clean, we're gonna blot it dry and then apply enough pepper powder to cover the entire surface of our tenderloin. Once our surface is coated, let's talk about how we're gonna dry it. We have two options. And the two options that you have for wrapping your meat are gonna be completely determined by how you choose to dry it. So option number one would be drying your meat inside your home refrigerator. If you're gonna choose option number one and you're gonna dry your meat inside your home fridge with your milk, your butter, your deli meats, your lettuce, whatever's in there, you're gonna wrap your meat in a wrap known as the dry aging steak wraps. These particular wraps are designed to be used inside your home fridge. It controls the moisture loss. It keeps your meat from drying out way too fast and it's absolutely perfect. So in the home refrigerator, you're gonna use the dry aging steak wraps. Option number two is hanging your meat inside of a dedicated drying chamber. So if you're gonna choose option number two to dry your meat, you're gonna use these dry curing wraps. These dry curing wraps are micro perforated. They're made out of collagen and they act like a casing around your tenderloin. So it's going to control the drying better in a higher humid environment. So remember, if you're going to use your home refrigerator to dry this tenderloin, you're going to be using the dry aging steak wraps. If you're going to be using a dedicated chamber to dry this tenderloin, you're going to be using the dry curing wraps. In today's video, I'm going to be using my chamber. So we're going to use the dry curing wraps, but regardless of which wrap you use, the process is still going to be the same. Let me show you. So we're going to take our wrap out of the package, and each package has three wraps. And you'll notice that the wraps are actually fairly large, which is great if you're doing, you know, large cuts of meat. But in this case, we're just doing a small tenderloin. So we're going to cut our wrap to fit our tenderloin. And each wrap will probably do four to five uh, tenderloins. So we're just going to take our 
tenderloin that's been coated in our pepper powder, and we're going to place it right in the middle of our wrap. I'm going to sprinkle a tiny bit of Sambuca on our tenderloin. Now you could use white wine if you'd like to. And the reason we're doing this is to add a little external flavor and to moisten the outside so that wrap adheres properly. You do want to be careful because as the wrap gets moist, it gets quite delicate. So just be gentle and careful as you begin to wrap that wrap around your tenderloin. As you're wrapping your tenderloin, try and press out any air pockets that might form. This is going to give you a much better seal between the wrap and the meat, and it's going to keep any kind of unwanted molds from growing in those little air pockets. Once we get the wrap completely secured and onto the tenderloin, we're going to place an elastic netting onto that muscle. This particular netting is going to keep everything nice and tight. It's going to make sure that that wrap binds to that meat properly, and it's also going to allow that tenderloin to keep its shape during the drying process. So you do want to be careful, but delicately and gently, you're going to want to get that netting around that tenderloin. And now that it's properly secured, we're just going to go ahead and tie it, uh, weigh it so that we can record our weight. And because we're using a collagen sheet and we're going to be hanging this in a drying chamber, we're going to prick it with a sausage pricker. If you're using a dry aging steak wrap and you're going to be placing this into your home refrigerator so that it can dry, there's no need to prick it. When it comes to recording the weight, I want to record my actual weight and then my target weight. And for this muscle, we want to target a 35% weight loss. So as soon as I hit 352 grams, which is 35% less than what it weighs now, this tenderloin will be ready to eat. And remember, because this is going into a drying chamber and I'm using a collagen sheet, I'm going to prick this tenderloin. But if you're using a dry aging sheet and it's going into your refrigerator, there's no need to do this step. It's now time to dry your tenderloin and you have two drying options. The first option is a drying room or a drying chamber where you can maintain an average temperature of 55 Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius and an 80% relative humidity. And you're going to hang it in there until 35% of the weight has been lost. Now this can be a basement or cellar or it can be a modified refrigerator as you'll see in just a minute. The second option, which is a much easier option, especially if you're just getting started and you don't have a drying chamber, is to place your meat in your home refrigerator. And the only difference is that you're not going to be using the dry curing wraps. You'll be using the dry aging wraps, and you're not going to prick with a sausage pricker. You do want to make sure that your tenderloin has airflow on top and bottom. So unless you can hang it, you'll want to place it on a grating until you lose 35% weight. This is what our dedicated chamber looks like, and this is where I'm going to hang my tenderloin. And this is just the modified refrigerator where we make all of our charcuterie. I've got salami. We've got a prosciutto in the background. And if you'd like to know how to build one yourself, stick around to the end of this video. I'll post a link to that tutorial, and you'll see it's actually quite easy. So our tenderloin is in the chamber. Yours may be in your house fridge. Either way, it's going to do the exact same thing. And now we wait. Our target is 35% weight loss, and in my opinion, that's going to give you the perfect silky texture without it being too tough. What's great about dry curing a tenderloin is that it's fairly small, and it generally doesn't take very long for it to get to its target weight. The one we did in this project weighed a little over half a kilo, and total drying time was about four weeks. So we've hit our target. It's time to cut into this and see what it tastes like. And I just want to mention that the reason our tenderloin is covered with mold is because it was drying in an environment that has been inoculated with this beneficial edible mold. If you're going to be using the dry aging steak wraps in your refrigerator, you're not going to have mold covering your tenderloin. So at this point, we're just going to remove all the wrapping from the tenderloin and give it a slice. All right, let's see what this tastes like. And this is what 35% weight loss looks like. Great color, great texture. It's not too firm, not too soft. It's got a prosciutto quality. It's gonna give you a great mouthfeel. All right, let's give it a little taste. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. Mm. <laughs> this is truly exquisite. The texture is perfect, and the hints of rosemary and garlic 
with the whispering flavors of Sambuca coming up in the background just to let you know it's there without being overpowering. And then there's the spicy and smoky Calabrian pepper crust. It just takes this to a whole nother level. And that's how you make the dry cured Calabrian pork tenderloin. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you are new to our channel, we'd like to say welcome. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.